the early church and how it can serve as the blueprint for your church today. Throughout the season of Easter, if you come to Mass on Sunday, you'll hear our first reading, which is usually from the Old Testament, is actually going to be readings from the Acts of the Apostles. And the Acts of the Apostles is part two to St. Luke's Gospel. St. Luke wrote his Gospel, um, and he got the best eyewitnesses, and he kind of did his research for that Gospel. He was a companion of Paul as well. And then he wrote the Acts of the Apostles. And uh, there's all these great figures in the Acts of the Apostles, Peter and John and James, and of course, uh, Paul, who was the persecutor of the church. He becomes uh, the great apostle to the Gentiles and all these amazing figures. And many people, uh, many uh, very well-meaning Christians and pastors, they'll read the Acts of the Apostles and say, okay, my church needs to be more like them. We need to be more like um, like uh, the, the early church. We need to get back to that. We need to get rid of maybe some of the fancy things that we've been doing, the light shows and the fog machines and all that stuff, and be more uh, like those, those first days of Christianity. But one of the things that they oftentimes miss is what is informing and empowering and and giving wisdom to all the acts of the apostles. Everything that they do is flowing, um, not just from having a good kind of model for church or a good small group plan. It's really flowing from them being steeped in the scriptures. And for them, the scriptures is the, what we call the Old Testament that they were men and women of the covenant, that they came from this Jewish background and they were seeped in that. So even as they expressed uh, their hope and, and, and their joy in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as the Savior, they, were, they, they always did it against that backdrop of Jesus being the fulfillment of all of the prophecies of the Old Testament. So when we look at our church, we should always, always say, like, how is my church embodying and fulfilling everything that came before it um, in the Old Testament? We see that in particular away in the Catholic Church and our sacraments, that the sacraments take up and fulfill um, everything that God prefigured in the Old Testament. And the sacraments are those ways that, God, that Jesus Christ um, has given to us to be a source of blessing and healing for the world. There's this great line in Acts chapter 2 where it says, they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. So we have the teaching of the apostles, which, which obviously uh, we think of the gospels, the letters of the apostles that we have, uh, but also all that steeped in the Old Testament. So the Old and the New Testament, which is the Word of God, um, that, that we live in that. We're, we're in community with one another and the breaking of the bread. The breaking of the bread was not just a word for, 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 uh, for eating or having snacks together. Luke used that word in a very particular way for the Eucharist. So when Jesus breaks the bread to those, in front of those two disciples on the road to Emmaus, that their eyes are open. And this is a Eucharistic action. So we ultimately find the fulfillment of this Acts church, this early church, when we encounter Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist, um, surrounded by and encouraged and strengthened by the teaching of the apostles on that apostolic foundation in the community as, as brothers and sisters with each other. And then when we encounter the risen Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the breaking of the bread, the Holy Eucharist, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. So for the church that Jesus Christ founded, we live this apostolic reality. We live the Acts of the Apostles today because we are rooted in Jesus' gift of himself in the Eucharist. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, click that bell, that bell, so you'll be notified next time we um, come up with a new video, which is every week we're coming out with new content. You can also uh, click on the link to subscribe to our email list so we can send new videos directly to your inbox. And if you would like to support our mission here, uh, please join us on Patreon. You can click the Patreon link and directly support the evangelization of the world. So thanks so much and God bless.